And now, from North Platte High School Studio B, welcome to Bulldog Band, where we explore the endless possibilities that education brings. This episode brought to you by MPPS Foundation and the Flower Market. I'm Molly Jorgensen. I'm Tucker Talbot. And this is the Bulldog Banter. With our guest, Sarah Talbot. How are you today? I'm good. How are you guys? Pretty, Pretty good. good. So you own the flower market, and you're also a part of our booster club? Yes, I am, yeah. What's it like owning the flower market? Well, it's a lot of work. Um, owning your own business is, you always think like, yeah, like I can get away and go do whatever I want to do, and but I feel like I work all the time. And I might not be during normal business hours, but definitely, as Tucker knows, I sometimes will be working nine o'clock at night or you know early early in the morning but owning your own business is really a great great thing uh how's your experience been any eyes lows of owning the yeah. business so like i said you have tons of freedom with owning your own business but then there's just those things like employees i have to manage employees and i have when it's kind of a small business like the flower market is i'm your marketer, I'm your boss, I'm your HR, I'm your, I'm the flower designer, I'm the order. So you do all these different jobs, have all these different hats. So sometimes you get, you know, just super busy, but um, overall it's a really great thing for anybody to look into, you know, to, to really um, see if there's something that you would like to open a business at. It's, I highly recommend it, but it, it is a lot of work. Speaking on the employee part, I heard like you have a lot of high school girls working. I What's do, the internship yeah. program like there? So I do. I have employees who I've ha- I've had high school girls ever since, pretty much we opened, and they kind of cycle through. When they go to college, they go off and leave, but sometimes come back when they're um, back for the summer. And then a lot of times that melts into an internship um, through the internship program at the high school, where they come and work for me during the day. Also, so it's a really great experience. Um, in the evenings, kind of some of their jobs are a little more clean up and, you know, f- helping us finish up our day, delivering, stuff like that. But when they get to do it um, through the internship program, we try to give them a little more experience in actually arranging flowers, um, being in charge of different projects, setting store design. So, I mean, the flower shop is a flower shop, but we actually have a really large gift store in the flower shop, too. So... Once we get done with flowers, then we have a whole nother list of jobs that have to be done every day just to keep the store looking fresh and new. Do you prefer flowers or the gift shop if you had to choose one? It goes, I know, it's hard. It goes back and forth. So I just came from there this morning where I just did like four hours straight of flowers. So like, I'm done. I'm done making flowers for today. Um, But then there's some days where I really, that's when you feel super creative because, you know, everything we do is my own design just coming out of my head. I don't try not to copy anything. We try to be super unique in what we do um, and have our own looks so people know, like, that arrangement came from the flower market. It, there's not a question of who made it. Um, so I like that part of it. But I do like the gift side, too. We go to markets. Um, we go to market in Las Vegas and shop for new products. So I love that also, trying to figure out what people would like, what they would like to see in the store and what's popular. And I find it really exciting when, like, Especially, so Shields carries a lot of products that we actually carry in our store. Oh. And when I walk into those stores, I'm like, see, I picked that out six months ago, and now it's in Shields. Like, I, I know what I'm doing. So it's kind of, you know, justification for what you choose when you see it in a bigger retailer. Like, I do have the eye that I need for our store. So is it hard to balance that gift shop and the flower market itself? Sometimes it can be. And sometimes you can tell, like if we have been really, really busy with flowers, the gift store, you'll walk through and you're like, oh my gosh, these displays need redone so badly. We just haven't had time to, they get shopped and picked over and things get moved. And so we try to, you know, make time for both um, as best as we can. But the flowers are definitely a priority. The flowers are always, we're always on a time um, under time crunch always because right. it's either they want their birthday arrangement at noon or this funeral needs to be delivered for the, for the visitation. So we're always continually on a deadline at the flower shop, whereas the gift store can kind of be pushed a little bit. Um, there's nobody calling asking why we haven't dusted a shelf. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So for people that want to own their business, yeah. like our students, how, what would you recommend to them or... 
How so, did you get them into that? How I got into owning our, our flower shop is was actually we lived in Lincoln, um, and I was working for a flower shop there who did mainly um, wedding flowers. And I told my husband, Tom, I said, I think I can do this for a little bit less than actually what we're offering in that flower shop. Like there was a bride that there's a there was a bride that was looking for a certain budget, and the flower shop I was at was just not meeting that budget. So we I quit and just started doing wedding flowers out of our house. Um, and that first year, I actually booked over 30 weddings. I was way way wow. busier than I would have ever imagined. So I kind of saw the market, and that's one thing like. If somebody wants to open a business, look and see where, like, you see a hole in the market in North Platte, or is there something in town that you wish we had? Well, it might be up to you to actually bring that to North Platte and open it up as a business. Um, and then we moved to North Platte <laughs> from Lincoln. And again, I did flowers, wedding flowers out of my house. And then we also, um, I worked for another shop in town. And kind of knew that I wanted to open my own shop that wasn't just out of our garage. And we started looking um, for spaces and found the space downtown and just decided it was honestly not the right time. Tucker's sister was like two, and I was really hoping that we could wait until she was going to preschool <laughs> to yeah. do this. But I knew I'd be upset if we didn't put it in that store. Like, I just felt like that was the right place to put it. And so we just did it. And she just came to work with me so was there any regrets after that or no all... not at all like I, we opened up in fall and made it through christmas and I, the last time i re that that very next january it was like okay we just have to make it till valentine's day and then it was like we just need to make it till mother's day and we just got busier and busier and busier and haven't ever looked back since well that was great yeah i don't remember you running wedding flowers out of our basement was that hard to run a whole business from your small town just <laughs> yeah. out of your house? Or yeah, you? yeah, kind of, what? it is. Um, so do, you don't remember don't the, remember the cooler that in all. the garage? <laughs> nope. Okay. So you did this from your basement in your garage? Uh, I had a floral cooler in our, the old cooler that oh, in the, died. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, um, it was in our, just in our garage. I already had contacts with like wholesale houses, so I knew where to get flowers and, you know, that wasn't a big deal. I literally made flowers on our kitchen counter. That's, I oh made, my goodness. I've probably, thinking back, I've been doing flowers for almost 20 years and I bet I've done over 500 weddings and I bet half of them were made on a kitchen counter wow, out of our crazy. house. Yeah. So, but it w allowed me to stay home with you. Like yeah. you didn't ever go to daycare really. Um, I drove you, you know, to school and I'd work, I'd work late at night. Like I said, you know, just working when nobody was awake, <laughs> essentially. So yeah, it was hard to balance, but it really worked out for our family at that time. Um, and your cost is a lot lower when you're able to work out of your house. You're not right. paying rent. Yeah. It's just your, like, the struggles you find working out of your house was, number one, knowing I was there. Like, how do you market yourself when you don't have a storefront? Right. Yeah. Um, luckily in Lincoln, I happened to, there was a gal who was doing the same thing and she decided to quit doing it. And she started referring me. It was just like pure accident that that all happened at the same time. That's how I booked so many weddings those, that first year, um, just because she referred me the business. But then the second year, I was like getting referrals from the brides that I had the first year. So you know you're doing a good job if somebody who you've done their wedding flowers has referred right. you on to the next um, to another bride, you know, going down the line. So anymore, I don't even really advertise for weddings. People just know we do them and, you know, they call us for it. So, yeah. Nice. What was your, like, timeline? Because I know when I was, like, six, you expanded the gift side. Yes. Like, knocked down that wall. Like, what was your timeline from everything? So yeah. when we started the flower shop, we were only the, for, for people who have been into the flower market, we were only on what we call the flower side where our flower coolers are. Um, we were renting the building. Now, when we entered into that rental agreement, we were kind of um, told that the building was probably going to come up for sale in the next couple of years, and we we had a right to buy it first. Um, so when they did put it up for sale, we decided, you know what, we are going to buy the building. Um, we had a renter in there who wasn't really paying rent. And I told Tom, I was like, let's just <laughs> kick them out and knock down a wall and we'll expand the gift store. At that time, I was going to market and seeing so many great things that we just didn't have space for either. So we, you know, we expanded that out. And um, I don't know, it was like two or three years after when we first opened. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, I opened up the gift side. Yeah. Everything. 
Yes, and so that just let us carry a lot more gift and yeah. home decor products and just gave us more space. So, What made you decide to do flowers plus um, a little gift shop? Well, they kind of go hand in hand a little bit. Um, I was in Lincoln, like I said, I was working for that one store who that's where I learned to do flowers at. Um, and she always had gift items in there too. And so when I had the extra space and you're like, what do we put in here? We just started <laughs> looking for gift items and yeah. then it just grew and grew and grew. I look back now at pictures from when we first opened and it, it's like embarrassing <laughs> to look at, like I really thought we like, were doing something. And, yeah, kind of. You look back and you're like, what is you that? You know when you like look back, when you're like 12, like seventh yeah. grade, and you're like, yeah. how did I look like that? Yeah. Well, that's how I feel about the store, kind of. Like, <laughs> people actually shopped in there and thought that was good. You know, I don't know. But well, you're doing a great job yeah, now. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so now that you have, like, obviously you're not from your house doing it anymore. Yeah. How is it balancing, like, your daily life and your family compared to working at your own business? So I am lucky that I have an awesome staff. Um, that I have in place that they let me do this, like leave it, you know, whenever I want pretty much. So that's super nice. Um, also owning my business gives me the flexibility to be able to go to like Tucker sporting events, um, to go do whatever I need to do, um, you know, during the day. Um, that being able, being able to be that flexible, I actually am on a lot of different boards and organizations and things like that, you know, around town. Yeah. Um, so I kind of, instead of spending my time so much in the flower shop anymore, I'm trying to, you know, just spread our name around town by being part of different groups and different organizations and things like that. So when people are like, I need to send a birthday arrangement and I'm on a board with Sarah Talbot, well, I'm going to call the flower market because I know her. So uh, my role, I feel like, has changed than what it used to be. You know, when we first opened, I did all the flowers now I mean do it today was kind of a rarity that I've made as many arrangements as I did today so it's your employees mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. they do a lot of the work yeah so and if I didn't have the staff I did there would be no way I would have the flexibility that I do like and that's super important to remember that you know I need to you got to keep them happy and keep them what they you know I want to keep them around so we always need to listen to what they want and need so they don't go somewhere else or find a different job right yeah so going back to that you said you were in other clubs around North Platte yeah so what else are you in so I'm part of the North Platte downtown association I've been part of that since we opened um, I've held different roles in the exec board uh, my biggest role though I feel like was when we redid the downtown streets do you guys remember that at yeah. all the bricks yes. yes so I was president of our organization at that time so all those things you see downtown I was like one of the main people helping make some of those decisions which is pretty awesome because in a hundred years or let's hope hundred years but like <laughs> relatives or people you know in the future those archways I can you can say like my grandma helped yeah design like I know her. Yeah. yeah and the flowers that we do downtown and you know all of the planters and all of those signboards and everything our exec board there's about four or five of us who really made most of those decisions and so that's the one thing that I spent a ton of time on it happened to be during COVID when that all was happening so it wasn't as much going on but yeah, yeah. not as chaotic yeah yeah so the blanked um is there anything else you're in? You mentioned you were in the Booster Club earlier. I am in the Booster Club. So I'm treasurer of the Bo Booster Club. There's like eight of us strong. Um, and I don't know if people really know what the Booster Club is. Yeah. 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 So the Booster Club, um, we do fundraising for all activities in the high school, not just sports, but like all activities. Um, and your teachers or your coaches can come to the Booster Club and say, we need, so like, I know swim team. So, so swim caps are not covered in the budget that's covered by the school for the swim swim team. So they come to us every year and ask for money to help buy all of the new swimmer or all the swimmers a swim cap for the year. Um, any organization can offer. I we can help out um, giving them money. They just have to put in a requisition and give it to Abby Pack, and we we work through them. But we really try to support as many organizations and sports and. However, that, you know, whoever is needing something for their group, we try to help you out with that. Um, we also do the parade, the um, 
homecoming parade that goes downtown. Um, so we just met last week and we've been planning that out. This year again, we'll have fireworks like we did last year um, and a better sound system. So, you know, yeah. it's so hard to hear um, up yeah. on stage. So we'll have a better sound system. So hopefully everybody can hear everything. Um, and then well, there's also prizes. I don't know if that's, if I can say that, but um, there's um, prizes going to be given for the best float of the high school kids mm. oh. and then the best float for everybody else, like all the elementary schools. Yeah. So I think it's a $250 prize um, that goes to your organization. So whether it's, you know, FFA or band or whatever it is, there's going to be a prize. Oh, well, that'll be cool. Yeah. Any other homecoming news or they so, can disclose? Yeah. So we're also, because <laughs> it's top secret, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, we're also trying to bring um, in food trucks before and after the football game, um, just to give kids an opportunity to eat before the dance because everything's so chaotic that night. Um, so that's kind of in the initial or the starting works of that. Um, nothing's been finalized, but I think it would be a really cool opportunity to have several different um, food trucks that come in and you guys can eat if you, but, you know, after the football game, before the dance. So, yeah. Yeah. With the Booster Club, do you just – fund anything like all organizations all yes I yeah I think any extracurricular organization can put in a requisition now there's rules like based on our bylaws for the booster club um, of what we can and can't cover like for the basketball team I don't think we can buy basketballs because that like, yeah but yeah. like something extra like, like a team dinner or? not that but like I think we bought jump boxes one year like boxes you jump up on you know to uh, like help box, with the vertical yeah. oh okay. you know different things that would be really nice to have but really aren't covered in the budget that they're given from the school so we're there just to supplement um supplement the teams and organizations as they need it um we also you know do a lot of fundraising yeah um, so like the senior banners that you guys yeah. see out in the um, commons area that's one of our biggest fundraisers oh really yeah so you buy your senior banner and then you get it at the end of the year but that's put on or put together by the booster club and then we work with amy Mitchell at a moment photography on that project so she takes all those pictures and puts them together so that's one of our big fundraisers um but we're always looking for ideas. Okay, so like one project we did, you know, the light up bulldog on the outside, not yeah. the big statue, the now. like little one. Yeah. yeah. So we did that last year. That was um, that was one project of the Booster Club. Um, the charging stations. Is there a charging station in the comments? Yeah, it's a little. Yes. It's not great. Yeah, yeah. I haven't used it. But okay. Well, I haven't used it, looks it either. A janky. But I oh, well, I believe that that was a Booster Club project. So they're always like looking for, you know. Just like little things to, to help improve, make yeah. Nice. Like we looked into getting new bleachers for the, for the, um, for the gym. It's too expensive. Yeah. Like we couldn't afford that project. So, right. you know. So that we're always nice. looking. You is, know. Yeah. Is there anywhere people can put in requests for? Abby, they need to talk to Abby Pack um, at Hirschfeld. She's our president, and she does all that stuff. So, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like you've seen North Platte grown as a whole and you've moved here? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think you look back and, like, when we first moved here, like, I remember when <laughs> when Tom was like, okay, we decided to move to North yeah. Platte. You know, you move from Lincoln where, there, where there's, like, Target and yeah. malls yeah. and yeah. food places, and you moved here and you're like, oh, man, this is, like, a huge change. This is going to be rough. Yeah, I mean, you get used to it. Like, after a while, it doesn't even, you don't even question it, really. But now, like, you start to think of all the new things we've been getting yeah. and seeing in the past three or four years. I feel like the re vitalization of downtown was a huge starting point mm -hmm. for our city honestly i think it showed people that you can put time and effort into our town and it does pay off um and then you know that's bringing in the mall and then uh, you know all of the all of the stuff that we're seeing in north platte i yeah. think is really really showing how our community is growing which is great it's because it was very stagnant for a long time we weren't seeing much growth not a whole lot of new business opportunities and businesses of any kind coming in so now you, everywhere you look i mean there's always something new opening right now yeah. i feel like yeah yeah like i think i heard somebody say that like the downtown was where businesses go to die yeah and that's Shay, are, probably wasn't yeah, probably. it yeah it and was people are fighting to go downtown yeah. now so like when we went when we first went downtown and opened the flower shop it was like I, you guys might have been too but do you remember those big ugly awnings yeah, that were, yeah. Yes. so that was like the first step to get those down and then we you know it all kind of snowballed from there 
Um, but once we got those down and got the buildings up to looking better and all the downtown in itself, people are really now wanting yeah. to come downtown as opposed to like, we don't want to be down there. It was yeah. scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good to know that you were a part of that. Yeah. And yeah. you helped build it up. Yeah, it's exciting. Just from your small little business. Just by volunteering. Yeah. Right. I honestly, yeah. Like, you know, it, it does take time and it takes time away from different things, but being able to help whatever organization or group you're in is super important, I feel like, just to be able to volunteer sometime. Well, do you have any other advice for students that might listen? Yeah, I mean, I think getting involved is always just super important, no matter what it is. Like, if it's a sport or if it's like this, you know, the podcast or if it's a musical group or an art group, I think no matter what, if you can get yourself involved, you're going to find people who are like-minded and who you want to be around. Um, and it just helps you, it helps you be a better person, you know, just to, yeah. just to stay involved in, in groups. And if you can learn how to stay involved as a kid, they're going to do those same things when you're adult, an adult. You're going to volunteer for downtown groups or you're going to be a JC or something like that. And it's just a great way to meet people, to spend your time, um, and it's super rewarding. So, yeah, just staying involved, I think, is always super, super important. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on. Yeah, yeah thank you're you. welcome. This is the Bulbadog Banter, and we'll, we'll see you guys see next, you next time. time.